Yantif, Chag Sameach. It is the second day, the second of Tishrei, 5,783. Day two of Rosh Hashanah. So new, what happens after Rosh Hashanah? What happens after Rosh Hashanah? Papa, wait, wait. It is after today's service, the real work begins. The real work, the day after. We have been preparing since the beginning of when? When did we start with our shofar? The beginning of the month of Elul. Getting ready, preparing for Rosh Hashanah and our yamim no ra'im, the days of awe. We know Rosh Hashanah. As you mentioned, we know Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. But what of these 10 days that separate the two? The Aseret Yamei Tshuva, Aseret Yamei Tshuva, the 10 days of return, repentance. These are 10 very important days during which we observe the minor fast. A minor fast, but something so significant. Some Gedalia. Tomorrow, some Gedalia. The fast of Gedalia. Minor doesn't refer to the importance. Minor refers to the length, the meaning of the fast. Because behind this fast, the meaning is quite significant. Unlike the fast of Yom Kippur, which begins at sundown and persists until the preceding nightfall, minor fasts begin at sunrise and end at nightfall. Some Gedalia also known as the fast of the seventh month. As we read in, as Dr. Tobolowski read in the Maftir, the seventh month, that's referring to right now. What's going on here today, Rosh Hashanah, is the only fast which commemorates the death of an individual. The only one. It is a tragic story a cautionary tale of the worst-case scenario when respect for our fellow human beings does not take place. Who was Gedalia, and why do we observe a fast tomorrow? On the 3rd of Tishrei, after Rosh Hashanah, Gedalia ben Achikam was a Jewish governor appointed by the Babylonians, by King Nebuchadnezzar, in the days following the destruction of the first temple. In the 6th century BCE, Gedalia was considered a very solid appointment. A man capable of uniting the Jews, a person from a respected family. No easy task. And Gedalia was going to do it. Our tradition holds that Gedalia was assassinated by our own people on the third of Tishrei. And with his death ended hopes that we could remain in Israel. Not only do we learn the identity of Gedalia's killer, Ishmael ben Netanya, Rahman al but we learn that Gedalia had been tipped off that Ishmael had intended to kill him. When this information was brought to Gedalia, he dismissed it. He wouldn't hear of such evil and immediately chastised the messenger for speaking Lush and Hora. Gedalia could not fathom the thought that someone could carry out such violence. Not only was Gedalia warned, but the messenger also suggested that Gedalia do what? strike first and volunteer to eliminate Ishmael. Gedalia was horrified. Chas v'chalila, God forbid, such a suggestion. 
Gedaliah had an innocent worldview. In modern Hebrew, we would say that Gedaliah was tam, tam, naive. But I think it's more than that. Because when we say tam, there is purity in this word, goodness, an optimism that shines through. The spark of the divine that acknowledged the same spark in all others that he encountered. Ishmael and ten of his men arrived for a visit with Gedaliah. Gedaliah allowed Ishmael and his men in. And during this visit, Ishmael assassinated Gedaliah and massacres those present. Som hashvi'i ze shloshesrei. The fast of the seventh month. This is the third of Tishrei, the day on which Gedaliah's son Achikam was killed, whom Ishmael, son of Natanya, killed. This teaches you that the death of righteous people is as hard for God as the destruction of the temple. Gedaliah's story is told in Jeremiah 40 and 41, 2 Kings 25 and 22, and in the Babylonian Talmud in Rosh Hashanah 18, side B. It can be tempting to react to this story, to say, oi, if only had Gedaliah, if he had listened to the messengers, if he had listened to his friend. However, the, two, the true tragedy is Ishmael's complete disregard for the value of life and his inability to share Gedaliah's worldview. By fasting on this day, we recall the purity with which Gedaliah viewed his fellows. We uphold the importance of hope, dialogue, peace, and seeing the world in a good light. On minor fast days, such as tomorrow, the only prohibitions in effect are those that forbid eating and drinking. Fasting is meant to assist us in transcending our human need for food and water and allow us to concentrate on the overarching message. The fast of Gedalia isn't about one man, but all that Gedalia represented it is about connecting with Klal Yisrael, with all of us, and acknowledging the importance of working together. Rabbi Dr. Abraham Levy, the emeritus spiritual head of the Spanish and Portuguese Jewish congregation in the United Kingdom, is known for saying, it is not how you fast that matters. It's how you break the fast. Fasting is important and valuable, but what's really important is whether it creates change in us. So, Nu, how do we know if it creates a change? Pay attention to how we sit down, how we break the fast, how we do anything, how we pray, how we prepare for our Musaf service. You know, the student goes to the rabbi, the student says to the rabbi, I've gone through the entire Torah Kula. I've gone through everything. I'm done. I'm ready for my diploma, and I'm ready to leave. Rabbi says, Ay, Gewalt, you're going through the wrong book. Maybe in other, in other disciplines of study, you can go through and say, professional. I've marked it. I know the information. But with the Torah, maybe you've gone through the Torah. But the rabbi says to the student, how many times has the Torah gone through you? Do we make appropriate brachot? Do we have kosher conversation? Does it make a spiritual difference within us? We start our 10 days of repentance tomorrow. A seret yameh tshuva. And it begins with this fast. The fast of Gedaliah, some Gedaliah. As we inch closer and closer to Yom Kippur, 
We put in the work to make peace within ourselves and strengthen our relationship with others. When we gather again, hopefully we'll see you again, but for Kol Nidre, after Shabbat Shuvah, we will have already addressed our transgressions, Bain Adam Lechavero, the ways in which we have erred in our encounters with other people, so that when we get, when we arrive, when we are, get ready for Kol Nidre and Yom Kippur, nothing else we have repaired the relationship. Nothing else is left except solely to focus on our relationship with our makom, the source of all Hashem. I want to wish everyone shana tova mituka tikatevu v'tichatemu, wishing us all a good and sweet new year. May we all be inscribed and sealed in the book of life. A good gebenshior, a year of blessings. Amen.